Kings Land on WRSE with you, somebody. Off of an excellent album, too. I remember that album came out, uh, that was my last year in high school. I remember it was a huge thing. By the time I got to college, I couldn't uh, walk down a single dorm hallway without hearing it. Excellent, excellent album, though. And this is WRSE 88.7 FM, Allenhurst College Radio, and we are super excited to be here. This is Good Time Sunday on every Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. And uh, this week, as with every single week, I'm here talking to an artist, but the, one of the, the differences is that I actually know this gentleman. He, uh, he and I, we work at the same place, and uh, what I had to do for my, for my job is basically I had to, I am one half of the machine, I guess. I am part of a, how do I want to word this? I don't know, basically Marcel and I, we work for the same com company, but we both do different things for it. And basically, I had to ride along with him because he is a driver, and I had to kind of see how he works so that I can appreciate his job, so that I can do my job better. And I was like, "All right, I got to be there at seven a.m. It's going to be a long, long ride. It's going to be boring, whatever." Um, and then I we got to just talking, and as soon as I met him, I was like, "You know what? This is a really good dude." And then I find out that he actually creates his own music. He is a DJ slash pro pro producer. In fact, he goes by DJ Chubb. And he's a really, really good, good man. I'd like to introduce Mr. Marcel Forrest to you guys. How's it going, Hurts? How's everybody doing? <laughs> so what's going on, man? What is going on? So we got to talking whenever we were driving, and we talked about how you work on your own music. Now, what is it exactly that you do? Because you said that you don't consider yourself to be a songwriter. No, I'm not. Uh, for my music to consider a song, I think I have to have vocals on it. Mm -hmm. And I don't produce vocals or even write vocals. I just produce music. So I actually consider them tracks. Okay. You know, but when it comes to music, I do quite a few different genres. You know, I like to do ambient chill music. I do house, blues, rock, hip hop. Now, you are the first artist I've had on here that actually does that kind of music, this kind of background soothing music. Because when we were sitting in the car, you were playing some tracks off of your, your first album. It was really great because um, it was kind of a chilly, gloomy day. And, it, and it's... It's not that it's gloomy music, but it's really relaxing music, and it kind of really set the tone for the whole day, and 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 it just kind of masked what was going on outside. You know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's kind of why I created it that way. Yeah, and and we're gonna talk about your first album in just a second, but first let's go back to the very beginning. How did you get started doing what you're doing? Well, it started. I visited a skating rink in high school, and I saw how much fun the people was having, how much vibe the DJ was pumping out there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to somehow get closer to that type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And so I started by me getting a job at the skating rink, helping out individuals on the floor, keeping themselves from hurting them. Mm -hmm. And then eventually a slot opened up for a DJ. And so before that, I started practicing really hard, nonstop. Mm -hmm. I would practice so much. I would be there at 4 a.m. in the morning, nobody's there. It would just literally hurt for me to put the needle on a record, so to speak. Right. My back would just ache. Mm -hmm. And then finally when I got to that opening, and they gave me a spot, that's where it started as far as the DJ is concerned. But music, it's been around all my life. Right. So then you wanted to, you got into it to what? Just get people moving? You want to get, you want to see people have a good, a good time and vibing on what you're doing for them, right? Yeah, pretty much. I felt like I was representing the people. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to be a skater. Then I went into the booth. Mm -hmm. So it made it easier for me to play music for people to appreciate. Because mm -hmm. I came from one aspect of it, not so, just skating around. And when was that? How many years ago was that? Ooh, that was back in 96. Back in 96, when 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 you were there at 4 a.m., you know, w did you think that you would come as far as you've come now? Like, you know, you stuck with it for, shoot, almost, it was almost 20, almost 16. 20 years? Yeah. 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 No, not even close. Mm -hmm. I just thought it was something to do. It came with a paycheck. Yeah. You know, it's something I enjoyed doing. Yeah. You know, it's like a hobby. Let's say you get paid to do this, which you consider as work, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Right, right. So that's kind of how that works. Right on. Now, with this with this first album, you actually, you said you've been playing the guitar for only a couple months, right? And it's not something you dabble with a whole lot. It's just kind of something that you can just kind of pick up and play. Yeah, that's correct. It's only, it hasn't even been a year. Mm -hmm. I got my first guitar last March. Mm -hmm. And I was, basically I bought it so that I could fill in riffs on some of the tracks that I created. Because I had uh, friends who played the guitar, but it's just hard to get a hold of the musician and kind of get them to buckle down, mm -hmm. to stick to a schedule, and kind of like play what it is that you're feeling. 
So to you know what, I need to learn how to play this type of music or use this type of instrument so that I can do it myself. Nothing fancy. It's just enough to know my way around the fretboard. Absolutely, absolutely. And and it's really cool because you actually have a song on your album which is is the lesson I learned, right? Yeah. It's track ten out of double meaning. <laughs> yeah, double 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 meaning there. And it's 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 a really great track, really, really soothing, you know. But I, I was just impressed on how, you know, you were able to just put that down and create a whole song out of those two chords that, that you played. And, and and something that was really, really cool, this is what was really cool, and, and I told you when you told me, is you're the first person I've ever met that said that you <coughs> will actually create music off of a sound. Yeah, you know? that's true. Do you want to talk a bit about about, about that? How, how does yeah, that no problem. I'll hear something that sounds really cool. It can be a synthesizer sound. It can be maybe a part of a melody. And it'll just like kind of like spiral into like illustrate like the DNA strand. You know, you get that one strand and it spirals into something else. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it is with music for me. If I hear something I like, I'll, I'll create everything around that one sound. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I heard a it was a D major seven chord on the guitar, mm -hmm. and a friend of mine played that, and I was like, that is a really cool sounding chord. Mm -hmm. And once he showed me how to play that, it just took off from there. Mm -hmm. That is really, really great. One thing I want to ask you about is this new album, which we're just talking of about. This album is your first album. It's the, the first album you've ever put out, right? Publicly. Now, when did this idea kind of... I mean, you know, I, of, of course, I'm sure it was always an idea in, in your head, but when did you actually start to implement making it? Uh, it started over, i say, a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. I was just listening to the radio, and there was a lot of chill music on there, and me and my wife, we would use that sometimes to kind of wind down at the end of the day. Absolutely. And me appreciating that type of music, I was like, man, I can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just got in the studio and I just started, you know, researching like what's are some really relaxing type sounds, not just any instruments that's available to me, but something that's relaxing sounding. Mm -hmm. And it started from there. I just want to create the epitome of relaxation on this album. Nothing fancy. It doesn't build into a big chorus or a big finish. It's even something you can really put on on a day when it's cloudy, it's mm -hmm. rainy, and you're just trying to relax, and you don't, you just want to dumb out, you know, right. away from the rest of the world. Right. That's that's really really interesting. Something else I wanted to, to know about is, I mean, I've never, I've never put out an, an album of my own as far as actually, you know, like putting out an actual album. I mean, you you you've got art here, you've got a, you know, you've you've got you've got a picture on the disc itself, and it's not paper; it's actually burnt on there. You know, how did you go about doing all this? Well, that's thanks to, it's a company out there that provides that for the individual artist. And I believe I came across one of their pamphlets. And when I contacted them to send me an up-to-date pamphlet of their prices and what they do, they sent also with it a, um, a seminar, so to speak, of just telling you how to market yourself, how to do this, how to do that, the do's and don'ts, what to help your album sell. And the first thing they said was presentation. Mm -hmm. You know, if a person picks it up, they have to be able to look at it and say, oh, this catches my attention. Let me open mm -hmm. it up and see what it's about. And so that's how I did it. I don't know if we want to plug the company or not. Sure. No. But yeah, yeah, as, yeah, as disc makers. Disc, disc makers, makers, it's easy to find. You can go on the internet, just type in discmakers.com, mm -hmm. and everything else there is, is simple to mm -hmm. use. Something else that was great is that you actually took the time. Cause we, we, we've had artists here who played live on, on the air. They've got... You know they're they're playing you know massive massive shows and they've got their songs up on online and stuff and their songs are not even copywritten and you actually went the whole way and actually got them le legally copywritten beyond just you know mailing it to yourself or something you actually yeah. I've actually done that before it does it cost the poor man's thing yeah you right can yeah. mail it to yourself and never open it until it has to be a legal issue mm -hmm. but I wanted to do it correctly this time mm -hmm. I mean if anybody's going to make music and be serious about it. You can create music all day, mm -hmm. but if you don't take it to the next step to protect it, then when you put it out there to the public, it's some shady people out there. Oh yeah, a lot <laughs> of them. You know, and so if, if it, even if it doesn't go anywhere, still protect it. Mm -hmm. You might come back to it a couple of years later and might want to do something with it. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, something else about this album was that you worked with a bunch of, of different artists. One song specifically that was that's just excellent is track number seven, "My Mother, My Brother," and it's it, it, it's a it's a really smooth song, folks. It's really, really smooth, 
and 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 just beyond that, there's a saxophone solo in that that is just man, it's awesome. <laughs> and and he actually layered two different parts. Mm-hmm. You know, I, no, um, do you want to tell us? I mean, you know, who you were wor- you were working with, maybe a bit about this song itself, where it came from, and why you chose kind of that sound for this song. Be- because, like you were saying, there are no lyrics. Yeah, no lyrics. The saxophone is the lyrics. Right, right. You know? uh, the song actually is supposed to represent the, the relationship between my youngest brother and my mom. It's kind of a, uh, how can I say, uh, you know, there's tension there, mm-hmm. you know, because he's the youngest in the family and we want the best for him. But sometimes you get to this age and you think you know everything. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, a mom is always going to try to protect all of her kids. Of course. So, you know, he doesn't want to listen. He knows it all. Then he goes out there and he gets into trouble and he sees that now he sees what we're talking about, but it's not like it's too late, but he's caught up in the system now, you know, and so it's like now he's trying to work his way back. So the song represents the early parts of that, you know, when he was still in high school, you know, when he was still young, before he got his first job. That's what the song represents. Now, the artist on there, the saxophone player, funny enough, I was actually going to use a guitar instead of a saxophone, but well, singing is hard to get a Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, an artist or a, a, sort of a musician mm-hmm. to buckle down and, right. and, and, and stick to a it. certain thing the way you're going. And I said, you know, I'm going to scrap the idea of the guitar and use a saxophone. A good buddy of mine, he's a DJ on the South Side. His name is Daryl Johnson. I call him DJ DJ. All acronyms, obviously. But um, he came through. We did 14 takes on it. Mm-hmm. And I expressed to him what the song was about and the meaning behind it. It's actually kind of a sad song, if you know the meaning. But if it's not, it's just something relaxing, mellow out to. But I expressed that to him, and he got on there, did 14 takes, and I just took the best four that I like, mm-hmm. threw a little background reverb, reverb on one of them to mm-hmm. kind of represent the the uh, the conversation or tension between my mom and my brother. So that I see my mom and my brother are the saxophones. Right. You know, the background saxophones, my brother, the, the, the saxophone in the foreground. That's my mom talking to my brother, and you listen to the track, and they kind of like intertwine like conversation. Absolutely. They go yeah. back and forth. Yeah, that is that that is really really great, man. Um, so working on this album, though, how do you, how do you feel now that it's it's done and it's actually it's it's here? And then something else that you you said is you're not going to be selling this, right? Uh, um, no, that one's free to the public. You can download a. Uh, free uh, copy of that on my website. Yeah, which is LakeStreetDetour.com. Mm-hmm. L a k e s t d e t o u r, and um, there's it's right on the opening page of it. Mm-hmm. And th- I'm not going to market that one at all because I think that that one definitely should just be for the people. Something that they can, you know, what where can I go to get some decent music that allow me to just mellow out, absolutely or study or think or get away. You know, eat a bowl of ice cream, chill, you know? Yeah, well, this is this is definitely it, folks. Lake Street Detour, Overcast, really, really great album. Tranquil, soothing, and peaceful. That's actually on the very front cover, too. So, Chubbs, what is what is, what is is next now? You, you I, I, I know that when we were talking a couple of weeks back, you were talking about how you want to kind of start moving into dance music now, right? Yeah. How, so what are you looking at? Well, it's mostly, I won't call it dance. I would use the genre of dance. Because in dance, we have house. We got deep house. We got dubstep. We got electronica, Eurotech, techno. You got all of that stuff. And that's some really cool vibes there. You know, so the, my next album, actually, Overcast album, is the first disc in a three disc box set. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking like maybe a year and a half, two years from now, it'll be all the genres of music I do in one box. This is just the first album. Mm-hmm. But if you go on the website, you'll see the other sides of me. Mm-hmm. You'll see a couple of tracks from the upcoming album, ho- hopefully to come out this summer. Yes. And then the last album, which is going to be blues and rock, that's just a secret. Mm-hmm. Nothing that's on the great, website man. about that. That is great, man. That that is really really awesome. So then people can reach you at LakeStreetDetour.com. Now you also have you're also on f- Facebook.com, right? Yeah, it's uh, same thing. Lake Street Detour on Facebook. Okay. You know they can they can also check out some of my stuff on uh, SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Just put in DJ Chub thirty six and they'll find me there. Now, one thing I wanted to ask too is, what is Lake Street Detour? <laughs> that started off as an idea for a really cool crew. Mm-hmm. Um, it was supposed to be more than just what you see now. You know, I'm representing Lake Street Detour. Mm-hmm. But I just started off with a few of us, and I wanted it to be like an open band where we can play more than just one stuff, you know, or mm-hmm. one, one set of music, you know. 
So I, so I put it in motion. I'm thinking about it, driving to work one day. There's a lot of construction on 294. There's like G2 signs everywhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I'm getting off at the exit over here to 10294 to come to the college. Right. And this boom says Lake Street. And I'm already thinking about the detour sounds that I passed up. I'm like, that would be a really cool name. Lake Street detour. You know, man. and it sounds kind of jazzy, sounds kind of classy. It can also pass for a house group, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, a lot of the house groups out there that have names, they got some far out names, but yeah. it's pretty cool, though. Right. You know, so that was the idea. And um, right as everything's already pressed and laid out, website is mm -hmm. up, email's up, mm -hmm. then a few of the members are like, nah, they just stop coming around. Right. You know, and not that they don't come around all the time, but now it's not what the aspect of moving this forward. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I'm moving this forward. Right. You know, I've also worked on some of their albums, too, for them. And I tell people I'm only going to be as serious about your album as you are. Right. Like, I got things to do. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you know? man. You know, you can't go holding people's hands, you know. I hope that answers your questions. So. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Lake Street Detroit. Right. Where's that come no, from? No, definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely. So then, all right then, guys, you guys can check out Mar Marcel on SoundCloud.com, <laughs> SoundCloud Facebook.com, and LakeStreetDetour.com. And that is LakeSTDetour.com. So then basically, though, just going back to it, you are Lake Street Detour. Yeah, that, that, pretty that's much. You. And, and, and do you think that you'll always be Lake Street Detour? Yeah, I'm going to stick with it. This is a name that I've come up with that it just represents, I think, a lot of different stuff. You know, you hear it, this question mark goes up behind that. Mm -hmm. What is that? Mm -hmm. You know? Right. And the best way people want to know anything about me, just go on the website. You know, you can like me on Facebook. Yes, mm -hmm. you can like me on SoundCloud. But LakeStreetDetour.com is where you're going to get the latest everything about me. Updates, events coming up, tracks that I'll have coming out soon, new mixes. Because all of my mixes are on there, too. It's not just music, like tracks you listen to that I created. It's also the DJ side of me, too. Mm -hmm. All of my mixes are on there. Right. Well, right on, man. Um, last question I want to ask you is, do you think that you could have done it for the last 16 years just on, on your own, or have you had people there that have been helping you out and getting you through? Oh, no, people help me out. I can't take all that credit. You know, support is big in this type of music because only an artist or musician would understand an artist or a musician. Absolutely. But when you got family members that understand that, that support you, my wife has been a big support. My boy Fred Cooley, mm -hmm. he's a big support too. I could go on and on. Boy, Charles Sims, mm -hmm. Glenn Creighton. Yeah. Those are good friends of mine. Some of their names I already mentioned in the album because they were there for that support. So mm -hmm. I don't just forget about them mm -hmm. now that I'm actually going in a different direction with music. But still, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, answer your question. Absolutely, myself. I couldn't have done that by myself. Yeah. You know, the support is what helps me along. Do I create the music? Yes. But to motivate me to keep going, mm -hmm. you know, people around me, that's what they do. Now, I, I know I already said, but I, I need to ask one last question. This song about your mother and your brother, mm -hmm. um, have have they heard it? Yeah. Both of them have. My mom, I don't remember her reaction to it because it's been a while. I've had this song in my possession for almost nine months. And I played it for her once, but I also played other songs for her, too. You know, and so I don't remember her reaction. My brother loved it, you know, mm -hmm. the emotional side, right. you know. Yeah, a little bit, but yeah. So they both heard it. Yeah, right on. Well, guys, thank you very, very much for tuning in. Marcel, thank you very much for being on, a.k.a. DJ Chubb, a.k.a. Lake Street Detour. So you guys can check out Marcel on SoundCloud.com, Facebook.com, as well as LakeStreetDetour.com. If you really want to get to know him and what he does, check out LakeStreetDetour.com. That's Lake S T Detour. Dot com. And actually, we're going to play a track really, really quick as we segue out called Feel My Love. It's going to be really, that's going to be put out next summer, correct? This coming summer. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, this coming. It, it is yeah. this coming summer now. It's what, six months away? Yeah, if things Even stay then, on track. Right yeah, on. I hope to have this out. By if summer. things stay on track, not songs, tracks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> hey, Marcel, thanks, man. Seriously. Hey, thanks for having me here. Definitely, guys. All right, guys, this is WRSE, and this is DJ Chubb on W. Right, it's kind of it's kind of hot, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey man, what did you think though? Dude, that was awesome.